Hi there, sports fans. It's Bill Riley, your state tournament public address announcer for the past five years, bringing you the pictorial highlights of the 1952 Classic. In pregame ceremonies, Rod Chisholm, executive secretary of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, presents the 1952 state free throw champion, Sherry Heath of Exira, who appears with her coach, Bob Williams. An unexpected visitor was Spike Jones, who was attending his first girls' state tournament game and was given a tremendous ovation by the great crowd. And now we see the final minutes of action in the consolation round game of the state tournament, with West Des Moines playing Guthrie Center for third place in the state meet. Valley High, West Des Moines in the black uniforms, scoring in their offensive court at this time, and in the gold and black uniforms, now with the ball in their front court, the girls from Guthrie Center. The Valley Giant Killers hitting 43% of their shots knocked off Guthrie Center 53 to 45 to win this consolation round game. All State forward Gloria Luther dropped in 34 points to lead Valley High to this 23rd victory and 30 starts for the season. That's Gloria shooting a free throw right there. This victory by West Des Moines squared a previous 52 to 44 victory by Guthrie Center during regular season play. For Guthrie Center, always a great competitor, it was the fourth place position in the 1952 tournament with a season's record of 24 wins and three losses. Now in the final minute of this consolation round game, we'll mention the lineup, the two teams saw most of the action. For Valley at forward, it was Gloria Luther, a junior, Dorothy Hodson, a senior, and Loretta Barnett, a junior. At guards for Valley, Sharon Tuttle, Sandra Relay, and Donna Weiser, all seniors. For Guthrie Center at forward, Leela Garlock, Joanne Bean, and Joyce Bennett, all seniors. Guards for Guthrie, Elsie Tallman, Beverly Patterson, Arliss Collins. Well, the final seconds are ticking away now in this consolation round game, and the uh, game is over. There it is. Valley High, West Des Moines, 53, Guthrie Center, 45. Third place in the state to Valley, fourth place to Guthrie. And now the time has come for the game of the year, the climax of the great 1952 tournament. And as captains of Monona and Rhinebeck meet with game officials Ron Heathman and Melvin Walker, the stage is set for the dramatic battle, which will be the 52 tournament. The camera briefly pictures the starting lineups for both teams. And the television cameras of WOI-TV are picturing the classic for untold thousands to see. And numbers of radio stations are presenting word pictures of the classic, while the press box is jammed with newspaper reporters from all parts of the state. Not only was the 1952 Girls' State Tournament greatest in attendance, it received the greatest press, radio, and television coverage of any such event in the history of the game in Iowa. Now we see action in the big game. Now with the ball in the light uniforms, Rhinebeck and a basket by Francis Billerbeck. In the dark uniforms, Monona. Rhinebeck from Grundy County, a town with a population of 1,600. There are 167 in the Rhinebeck High School. 76 are girls, coached by Max Liggett. Rhinebeck entered this final game with a record of 23 wins and two losses. One of those losses at the hands of Monona during the regular season, 54 to 46. Monona, of course, from Clayton County, town population 1,345, 185 in the high school, 91 girls. Coached by George Peterson, Monona entered this final game with a record of 36 wins and only one loss, and that one loss to Roland, 63 to 60, in the second game of the regular season. Well, as the seconds stick away now in this first quarter of action, let's check the starting lineups for the teams. For Rhinebeck, at forward, number 10, Leanne Roberts, a sophomore. At forward for Rhinebeck, number 24, senior Francis Billerbeck. At forward, number 25, a junior, Marion Filth. Starting guards for Rhinebeck, and we see them in action now. Number 12, Shirley Barfell. Number 15, Rosella Blakely. Number 23, Francine Billerbeck, all seniors. The Billerbecks are twins. Francis at the forward spot, just short of six feet tall. Francine the guard, six feet. Now from Monona in their forward court. At forward, number five, a senior, Joanne Bloomhagen. Number 35, a junior, 
Dorothy Hubacher. Number 13, a senior, the great Norma Schulte. At guards for Monona, number three, a senior, Donna Fett. Number four, a senior, Carol Gilbert. And number 15, a senior, Nancy Redeso. Norma Schulte, the six foot four, scoring sensation of the Monona team. Well, action continues now in the final few seconds of the first quarter of this championship game. From the very start of the game, Rhinebeck served notice. It was out to stop the great Schulte. And this first quarter of play was nip and tuck battle all the way. There are the Rhinebeck fans with a cheer for a basket by the Rhinebeck team. Nip and tuck all the way in the first period. A well-balanced Rhinebeck team edging ahead of the Monona club in the first quarter of play. This is the first time in nearly 40 years of basketball at Rhinebeck that a team has made it to the state tournament. 19 to 14, end of the first quarter. That's it, 19-14, Rhinebeck leading, a narrow five-point advantage. Yes, 40 years of basketball at Rhinebeck and the first time that a team has made it to the state tournament. Actually, this particular team was only three years old, as basketball for girls was discontinued at Rhinebeck during the war years. So actually, none of the seniors on this team had any experience as freshmen and began playing basketball as sophomores with the return of the sport to the school. Well, action continues now in the second period of this championship game, with Rhinebeck fighting to keep that five-point lead. Let's at this time pay tribute briefly to all the teams that made it to the state tournament. After all, there were 16 teams in the state meet, and every one of them a champion. Indeed, the state meet is truly a tournament of champions. So, while play continues, in the second period, we'll mention the 12 other teams that were eliminated in play up to the semifinal round, which produced the four teams we've seen in action on this film. West Des Moines and Guthrie in the consolation, now Monona and Rhinebeck in the final game. The other 12 champions from Crawford County with 26 victories, three losses, coached by Lawrence A. Mucky, the girls from Charter Oak. From Greene County, with 27 victories, four losses, the number two ranking pole team from the Northwest, coached by Bob Muller, Sherdan. From Fremont County, with 24 and two, the number two ranking pole team from the Southwest, coached by Oren C. Mann, Farragut. From Franklin County, with 24 and five, coached by Earl L. Opheim, Franklin Consolidated. In the tournament from Lyon County, with 21 and five, coached by Connie Cameron, the girls from Little Rock. Then from Palo Alto County with 24 and two, the number one team in the Northwest coaches poll, coached by Daryl Anderson, the girls from Mallard. From Louisa County with 24 and two, coached by Leo H. Staley, the girls from Morning Sun. From Jones County with 25 and four, coached by H.M. Tomlinson, Olin Consolidated. From Marion County with 24 and one, the number two poll team from the Southeast, coached by Dick Brunigy, Pella Christian. From Wayne County with 22 and two, coached by Earl O. Berg, the girls from Seymour. From Ringgold with 24 and four, coached by M.H. Obermeyer, the girls from the tiny town of Pingley, and great scrappers they were. And from Muscatine County with 23 and three, coached by C.E. Westfall, the girls from West Liberty. Yes, those were the champions, the 12 other teams eliminated in play up to the semifinal round. The halftime of the championship game, Rhinebeck, 37, Monona, 33. And now action begins in the third period of play. In this period, and the early minutes of this particular quarter of play, the Monona girls put forth a tremendous drive that pulled them right up to tie the score. And what a furious quarter this was. In the third period, the Monona girls poured it on, and the game could have gone either way as both teams scored basket after basket, with the game seesawing back and forth. However, the true championship quality of the Rhinebeck team was clearly shown as they held their own against the furious Monona attack. Now we see Monona in their own forward court. The game very, very close now after a four-point difference at the halftime. There's the great Schulte scoring. And Monona pulling up with the Rhinebeck team. Rhinebeck with the ball now. And it's 39-39, six minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the third period. It was at this point that the furious tempo of the battle really tipped the scales towards Rhinebeck. And they edged ahead, never to lead by very many points, however. Monona always threatening throughout the game. While action continues in this third period, it would be well to make note of the attendance record that was shattered in the 1952 state tournament. 
This was the greatest state tournament attendance in the history of girls basketball in Iowa with 37,013 paid attendance, which was an increase over 1951 of 1,103. And incidentally, 51 was the former record year. Attending the state tournament this year were literally hundreds and hundreds of girls teams from all parts of the state and neighboring states. In particular evidence from other states were several girls teams from Missouri. Earlier in the season, sectional tournament play, again, all existing records were shattered for total attendance at the 64 sites. And district tournament play also produced near record attendance. And now we continue in this third period of play, the crucial third period of the ball game, with Monona very much in the game, and the continuing action as the out forwards for Monona began trying those long shots. Joanne Bloomhagen, Dorothy Hubacher, and also in the ball game throughout many of the minutes, Juanita Bloomhagen. To look back briefly over the tournament play, in the quarterfinal round of play, Valley High beat Pella Christian 52 to 48. Monona defeated Mallard 59 to 51. Guthrie Center topped West Liberty 51 to 34. And Rhinebeck defeated Tingley 69 to 35. Those were the results of the games played in the quarterfinal round Thursday afternoon and Thursday night of the tournament week. Then in the semifinal round, the Friday night games of tournament week, the semifinal round was one of the most exciting in the history of girls tournament play. Monona defeated Valley 61 to 59 to advance to the finals, and Rhinebeck just got by Guthrie Center 46 to 44 to make that trip to the final round. Truly, really, these semifinal games were as exciting as any in the history of the state tournament. Now, as mentioned, number 14, Juanita Bloomhagen in the ball game for Monona. An attempt by coach George Peterson to spark the Monona team in that third period. That's Juanita shooting and scoring, little number 14. And as action progresses in this third quarter of play. In the forward court, the Rhinebeck girls in complete control of the ball. The pass always into the pivot, but with two out forwards who could shoot them from great distances. Leanne Roberts, the sensational sophomore, and Marion Filt, the junior forward. Rhinebeck, the powerful front court. We see action continuing now in the closing minutes of the third quarter. And in this third quarter, we saw the ball game all tied up as Monona girls moved up to challenge the lead held by Rhinebeck throughout the entire game. Rhinebeck, as you will remember, led by five points at the end of the first quarter, led by only four points at the end of the half, 37-33. And the ball game is tied up at 39-39, with a little over six minutes to play in the third period. And now the hectic action continues in this third period. Marion Philp shooting a long shot, a rebound by the Monona guard. Donna Fett, Carol Gilbert, Nancy Redeso. The Monona backcourt. Juanita Bloomhagen, number 14, shooting those long ones, trying to pull the defense out. But that Rhinebeck defense was too tough. They continued to control the ball off the boards and pass it up to their teammates. Leanne Roberts, number 10, holding. That's Philp with the hook shot, left hand. At the end of the third period, Rhinebeck 47, Monona 47. And now we move into the fourth quarter of action in this hectic final game with the ball game all tied up 47-47. Monona very much in the ball game. Rhinebeck continually fighting to get that edge. Throughout the play, the ball game be tied up. Rhinebeck could edge ahead, but never establish a clearly defined lead. And so in this fourth period, again the Rhinebeck girls trying to stop the charge by the Monona team and the great Norma Schulte. We see Rhinebeck in their forward court now. Pass into Francis Billerbeck. The shot just missed. Notice the rebound work by the great Billerbeck. Passing the ball out to Leanne Roberts, tipping it back out to her. There's Philp in for that left-handed shot. 
In this fourth period, Francis Miller back at forward for Rhinebeck came through in championship style with deciding shots in that furious final quarter drive. She elevated the rebounding department to great heights as she cleared the boards time and time again. As a result, Rhinebeck's front court got 22 more shots than Monona's. Of course, for Monona, it is impossible to say too much in praise of Norma Schulte, who now owns virtually all the records in the book. Scoring 41 points in the final game, Norma boosted her four-game tournament total to 174 for a new record. This total obliterated the former record total of 142 established by Arliss Van Langen of Camrar in the 1948 tournament. In this final game, Schulte scored 20 baskets in 29 attempts, while the other two forwards hit seven of 24 to give Monona a 47% game average from the field. Speaking of records established by Schulte, she holds the single game record of 111 points in one game. That was against Harper's Ferry in sectional play. She holds the greatest single season record with the year's total of 1,575 points for the season concluded with this tournament. And Norma Scholey holds the all-time record, scoring a total of 4,187 points in her career as a high school girl basketball star. Truly a tremendous lineup of records established by a great star. This appearance in the state tournament marked the fourth attempt by Monona to win that championship. In two previous years, Monona was defeated in first round of play. However, last year, the Monona girls were defeated 70 to 59 by the 1951 champions, Hansel. And now we view the final hectic session, the last few seconds ticking away. And it's Rhinebeck now with a scant lead of a few points, trying to hold the ball, trying to hold it a little bit longer. There's Billerbeck with a try, not good. But again, the great rebounding work by Francis Billerbeck, always in there. However, always troubled by the Monona guards, Seth Gilbert and Redesel. Now in the forward court, it's Monona striving hard to score in those closing seconds of this great. There's the girls and the boys and the cheerleaders and all from Rhinebeck. There are the girls, the cheerleaders from Monona. Never giving up, the crowd always cheering their particular favorite on the victory. In the forward court now, seconds ticking away, it's Monona. The rebound. giving up, always fighting desperately. The Monona girls just couldn't match the balance, the scoring power, the great defensive work of the Rhinebeck team. Now the seconds tick away in this ball game. The officiating excellent in this state tournament throughout every game. In the forward court for Rhinebeck, now the Rhinebeck girls are attempting a last minute stall. There was a set shot and the pass back out to the out forward. Leanne Roberts has it now, passes it to Francis Billerbeck. Out to Philp, to Roberts, back and forth. The Rhinebeck girls putting on a stall, way down for a shot, but no shot, no. Coach Max Liggett said, stall, girls. The seconds are ticking away. This ball game will be ours, if we can hold that ball. However, the Monona guards are fighting desperately to get control of that ball, but they cannot do it. And there is a shot in the final seconds of play by Rhinebeck. And there's the gun. The ball game's over. And look at the crowd on the floor, a crowd made up of Rhinebeck players. As the subs congratulate the regulars, they're all champions. 61 to 55, the final score. Rhinebeck, 61, Monona, 55. On the floor with the awards, the girls from Hansel, the 1951 state champions to preside in the award ceremonies. Presentation of awards, Rod Chisholm, executive secretary of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, introduced Mr. M. O. Moe. 
Right now on the floor, we see Mr. Chisholm greeting the Hansel girls as they come out with the great trophies of the tournament. Now, Mr. M. O. Moe of Cherokee, member of the board of directors from Northwest Iowa. Mr. Moe, in turn, presents the trophies to the teams. The number four team, a great team, coached by Chuck Neubauer, Guthrie Center. They're the Guthrie Center girls, receiving their beautiful fourth place trophy. Now the Hansel team presents to the third place winners, Valley High, West Des Moines, receiving their trophy, Valley High. There's one missing, however, from that team. She should be showing up. Here she comes now, yeah, the little mascot. There she is, and she helped win that trophy, too, and she's as proud as any of the girls. Valley High, third place winners in the state. Now, the great, great competitors for two years, the second place team in the state. A great ovation from the crowd for the girls from Monona. Receiving all their awards with their coach, George Peterson, the girls from Monona. And now, the 1952 state champions dragging their coach, Max Liggett, out of the floor, the girls from Rhinebeck. And that's the story of a great tournament. The 1952 tournament, the thrills, the tears, the cheers, the great crowds, the excitement. Yes, another state tournament is history. And the champion of the 1952 state tournament, Rhinebeck. Thank you.